All right, welcome back to the Sister Brunch Podcast here at the Essence Film Festival for the 30th anniversary of Essence. It has been amazing, and we're so lucky to have been able to talk to so many amazing, beautiful black women filmmakers. We've got an animation project to talk about this time. We're so excited because I don't think, I think this might be our first animated project that we've ever had. So we have Miss Angela Davis and Miss Latoya Turner, and they are the filmmakers behind Brown Hands, Black Schools, HBCUs. Yay! <laughs> yes, you got it. Yes, yes, yes. And so I got to start with the title because it's so intriguing mm -hmm. to me. Brown Hands, Black Schools. So tell me what that means. So, yes. Yeah, so the organization is titled Brown Hands Literacy. And Brown Hands Literacy came about with getting kids to know that their brown hands can be so impactful and touch the world. With your brown hands, you can pick up books. With your brown hands, you can do so many different things. So it's a series, actually. So the first book is titled Brown Hands, White Sand. And then Brown Hands, Black Schools, HBCUs is the second part of the series. And it's the same name. The film is the same name as the, the children's book. Okay, so are you the creator of Brown Hands? Yes. Tell us a little more about that. How did you get started? So I was a teacher for 13 years, and during my time yes, of teaching... Love educators. What grade were you teaching? So I taught kindergarten, first, second, and third grade over the course of 13 Thank years. Thank you for your service. Uh, we <laughs> both are Central State University graduates, so yes. we're repping Central State University. Yes. But during, while I was teaching, I would teach my students about HBCUs, and I noticed that a lot of black and brown students, they did not know what HBCU was. So the whole book and the whole brown hands literacy came about was this would be a cool idea to educate kids about HBCUs at an early age. I love it. And Angela, how did you get involved? Um, so like she said, we are a Central State University alumna and I saw her promoting her book and she was really pushing her book and I saw her hustle and I saw her grind and I saw her dedication yes. um, to her project. And so when she um, came out on social media and said she wanted to turn it into an animation and I had experience mm -hmm. um, in the filmmaking world, I just slid on in her DM <laughs> and I said, I want to help you. And that's how the collaboration, we, we went, both went to the same university, but we were there like 10 years apart. Oh, so you didn't know each we other, did. you just reached out right out. Yeah, I knew that she was an alum based off of the book. And so I said, I want to help her. And, and, and so I did. I slid in the, in the DMs and she was open and she was open to the assistance. And so that's kind of how it came about. I love it. Yeah. Angela, can you talk a little bit more about your experience in the industry? So I've been writing and directing stage plays for over 25 Amazing. years. Um, so during the pandemic, that kind of had to shift. And so then I found myself doing documentaries and many documentaries and doing um, some web programs for whether it's COVID-19 or um black history, things like that. I was kind of commissioned to do some work because of my daughter, because she's a, a, an aspiring actress. So we were doing that and it really kind of came about during COVID, the shift from stage to digital or film. And so that's kind of what happened. And then talk to us about how you learned about animation. Because so you had the books, yeah. right? And yes. then that way, at least you had these characters drawn. Do you use the same graphic designer or character designer from the books for the film? So the illustrator of the book is a different person who animated the film. So I reached out to an animator. Honestly, it was kind of hard to find an animator to animate, to animate this, turn this book into a film. But she's, she's dope. Her name is Janice Cabrera. She's in, I'm based out of New York. But she was able to take the illustrations that we had from the book and bring these characters to life. So I, I'm not sure how she used her talents Amazing. because I'm not an animator, but it was something that she was able to, it reflects exactly what the book is. So she was able to take the characters in a book and she turned this whole project to animation. And not only is it animation, but it's animation in live action scenes. No. Yes. So animation and live action together? Together. What was that like to produce that? So that was actually fun because it's kind of like reading Rainbow meets HBCU culture. <gasps> oh, and so that's really what it is. LeVar and so Burton would be so He would be so right. Hopefully, hey, LeVar Burton. LeVar Burton. LeVar Burton. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. So what? Yeah, that sounds amazing. So it was just, it was exciting to be able to do. And Latoya always tells a story that with animation, it def definitely captures the, the young people and it captures their attention. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But... When you think about animation, kids kind of know that that's fantasy. And we wanted them to be sh assured that HBCUs and education, and that this is real. And so we wanted to do animation with some live action. Oh, yeah. it. But we also, we were very careful, even with the live action scenes, because we still wanted to connect with children. Mm -hmm. And so the host of the live action part is also a young person as well. 
Oh my goodness. Yes. And also I'm thinking, wow, you put a lot of elements that can be challenging. You had animation. Then you had animation with live action and you had a young star working yes. on yes. this. Yes, we had a couple young stars. Yeah. We had a, cu a couple young stars um, featured in this project. Riley Davis, which is Angela's daughter. Um, oh, that's right, because she's an actor. Yes. So, okay. Yes, my nephew, Walter Turner, and the other young lady, Skylar Adams, they were able to bring in all the HBC, HBCU facts and tell the story of the book, which is an amazing job. But when you're dealing with kids and the cast, I mean, Riley, Riley is awesome. Riley is great. But sometimes you have to do your lines over and over and over again. And my nephew, Walter, um, he's not a seasoned actor and this was his first time even in a project but he done it he did an amazing job but it was like okay take one take two yes. and then at some point you know kids they'll get tired in the process yes. but once they were able to see the finished project and see how they had done in there it was so amazing for them to even watch this project so beautiful i love it. it so one of the things that we want to do more of because I, I feel like we don't talk about this enough and it's such an important aspect of getting our work done is financing mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about what was the budget even if it's a ballpark and then how did you go about raising money for it yes Okay, so one thing about animation is expensive, y'all. It's right. very, very expensive. It takes a long time and is expensive, right? Yes. I mean, film, it, this is a new lane for me, but animation that was specific, uh, something that I had to do research on. And I remember once I found out the price of animation, like, so the bar part. So our film is 16 minutes, and then that 16 minutes um, is probably eight minutes of animation time in there. And just that time frame alone, your plan, and this I heard, I, I, listen, I heard that this is a decent price, but that was almost $20,000. For eight minutes. For eight minutes. That's an amazing price. I will say for animation, and that speaks volumes to how you were like, we're going to make this happen. You had people who cared about the project, but mm -hmm. that's an incredible price for that. And you know what? And if you see the film, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. It's like the animation is amazing. Um, but as far as like funding a project like this, I always say you can't do anything without any money. <laughs> but there are some like grants and things that's available so I was able to fund you know this project through grants and then yes. the rest you, is you hustling and bustling a, a grant yes out, yeah. United Way of Greater Cincinnati and United Way is in all different states and cities so United Way it was originally for us to host HBCU literacy events and I had to pivot to say hey I can't just host these events and then that'll be it I need something that's going to last a lifetime so Brown Hands Amazing. Black Schools HBCUs. It's Say right it again. On. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Brown Hands Black Schools HBCUs. Hey. Okay. We also have a segment on tech. So it's Let's Talk Tech because another thing I think, especially for us, they people rarely ask us about like the actual pragmatic approach to getting our work made. So what is a term or a concept that you learned while making this that someone who is not a filmmaker knows? So since we are into animation, Animation. We're not animators, but one thing that our animator, I heard her say often is Adobe Animate. Um, a lot of animators use this tool, and there's different tools to animate. So I'm going to, since it looks so good, I'm going to go with Adobe Animate. Adobe Animate. <laughs> Clearly, you got an amazing person to do your animation and using Adobe Animate. It just sounds like you just have a dream project. I can't wait to see it. It's so impactful. Thank you both for coming on Sister Brunch. We have a gift for both of you. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Sister Brunch swag. Thank you, Sister Everybody Brunch. And there is a black owned company. I know that's so wear right. them proudly and we will be following your work. We're so proud to have you on the podcast and to continue to follow you. So thank you so much for being on Sister Thank Brunch. you, thank you, thank you. Our pleasure. Yes, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing here at Essence and really highlighting black women. We love it. We love you. <laughs> Hi, this is Angela Davis with Brown Hands Black Schools HBCU. And I am LaToya Turner. And you're listening to Sister Brunch. <laughs>